The first cooperative venture between India and Europe took place in Kuru back in 1981 with the Ariane 3 launch of Apple, India's first geostationary satellite, an experimental telecommunication spacecraft. At the Indian Space Agency Museum in Bangalore, Apple takes pride of place. India then went on to develop a number of telecommunication satellites. The INSAT satellite family, which was also designed for weather forecasting and Earth observation. In total, Ariane in its different versions has launched no fewer than 13 INSAT satellites. I think we have been having the close cooperation with the ESA and the member countries in many respects uh, right from the beginning of the space program. I would say it is a major achievement as well as the cooperation between ISRO and ESA is concerned. India has also developed its own launches at its Sri Arikota base in the Bay of Bengal, putting it up alongside other space powers. With its lunar mission, India is about to enter a new stage. This is Chandrayaan, a lunar craft that is a real technological and scientific achievement and the international community has been invited to take part in this important event. As far as the Chandrayaan mission is concerned, mostly the work is done in, by the Indian laboratories and the industries. But at the same time, we wanted to make it a truly you know, international mission. Against the announcement of opportunities, we got uh, as big as about 30 proposals. Out of that, six of them we have shortlisted, two from USA and uh, four from Europe. And uh, I'm happy that uh, it's become a truly an international mission and uh, global science scientific community is going to benefit out of it. Instruments developed by ESA for Smart One, launched in 2003, all planned for use on Bepi Colombo, are loaded onto the Chandrayaan Pro. This is an opportunity much valued by European scientists. We have science, technology and cooperation and also we have a cultural, cultural exchange and it allows us to give additional uh, points of contact to Indian scientists and I hope that in future uh, a scientific exchange and a fostering of science will result out of this mission. There will have to be a follow-up to Chandrayaan, but India has also expressed its interest in other forms of cooperation that go beyond lunar discovery and astronomical missions. I think in the future uh, we want to be closely working with ESA in many of the areas. The one of course is the planetary exploration, whether it is a moon or Mars, we have to have the continuity program. But also I understand the Galileo program is going to come up in Europe. Similarly, we are going to have the Indian regional navigation system as far as India is concerned. If we can have uh, these systems interoperable, that is going to provide a lot of service uh, globally. Again, uh, there are a lot of uh, technical areas where the strength of Europe and India can be put together and we can provide uh, appropriate solutions in the space explorations in the future. This large antenna was designed by the India Space Agency and specially installed some 30 kilometers outside Bangalore to monitor the Chandrayaan mission. It has uh, international character in sense saying that uh, all specifications which we have put for this deep space uh, antenna, the IDSN is what we call Indian Deep Space Network Antenna, meets uh, the international standards. That means uh, it can be used for Cross support and interoperability, both of them can be offered, not only for Indian missions, if uh, ESA wants or, the Na or NASA wants, we are there in this part of the hemisphere, closer to equator. It, has, it enjoys a lot of advantages uh, technically and um, that's one uh, proud thing for us to tell that, yes, we have an Indian antenna available for the international community. It forms part of India's deep space network and is a good illustration of India's desire to play a role in the conquest of space and to offer its services to other countries.